And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a Queen Games title, a pretty new one. We're going to take a look at Castelli. Uh, and this is a kind of a area influencing game in which you're going to be taking turns and flipping tiles in order to try and influence different resources. And influencing these resources is going to allow you to build castles, which will eventually score you victory points. It has some very nice artwork by Michael Menzel, my favorite board game artist, uh, and is going to be a really short game for two to four players that plays in probably about half an hour to 45 minutes. So why don't we take a look at the components real quick, I'll give you a brief overview of gameplay, and then I'll meet you back here with my summary. So here you can see the layout for a two-player game of Castelli. We have two of these boards, modular boards, flipped up, and there are two flipped down, and there's a resource track in the center. With more players, you would flip these other boards over, and you would move this track to one side so as to have a larger play area. Each player has nine castles, which they're going to be trying to build in order to get victory points in the game. Uh, they also include a deck of cards, which are going to be kind of rolls that you're going to get throughout the game, and you'll get these by flipping over tiles on the board in order to get different resources as well as those cards. So the two-player board, or the whole board, is composed of octagonal spaces with different types of resources on them, surrounded by square tiles, which are called heraldic tiles, and you're going to be flipping these over in order to try and accomplish different things throughout the game. And on a player's turn, they're going to do three things. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to flip over any one of these tiles. So they're going to choose a tile, and they're going to flip it over. So let's say the player decided to flip this tile over. And let's take a look at the generic uh, design of a tile. You can see here that there's four shields on it in the four player colors. Uh, and these are going to be influence that you're going to have on the surrounding spaces. So you're going to look at these and you're going to see, okay, maybe I'm the green player. I could get three influence out of this on one space. And you're going to be able to turn this piece and place it back onto the board and trying to influence these different resource spots on the board. The different resources on the board are going to be th one of four things. You have hay, you have wood, you have stone, and then you're going to have these tents, which are going to allow you to draw cards if you get the most influence on them. Now, you'll also note that the shapes of these resources are different in size. This one has two sides, whereas this stone over here has three sides, but only one of them is actually available to be influenced. For a better example, let's look in the center of the board somewhere. So, for example, this stone area here has two sides which can be influenced, whereas this hay over here only has one. So, once you flip this over, you're going to turn it and you're going to place it in the way that best benefits you and least benefits your opponents. So, for example, since this spot that I flipped over only has one area that requires one spot to finish it, notice that there's only one side exposed for this wood, I would place this as the green player with the three influence facing the wood. Then, after you've done that, you're going to assess for any areas that are complete. And this completes this wood spot. So green would get one wood, and you would mark that on the tracker on the board to show that green has one wood. However, there's also resources to be gained along the outside of the board. And since we don't have a yellow player, this would be okay and it wouldn't cause a problem, but this resource on the board shows that this, whoever's influence is facing this stone is going to get an additional stone. So you'll see yellow here faces this stone. Since there's no yellow player, yellow wouldn't get anything. However, we have yet another area completed, and that's because this hay here faces the outside of the board. Now, the neutral player on the outside of the board, represented by this gray shield, has one influence on this hay. But red, the other player in our game, since I placed the tile in this direction, actually has three influence on the hay, and red would get one hay for green's placement of this tile. So after you've evaluated any areas on the board that could have been completed by the placement of your tile and given out the appropriate resources, you move to the building castles phase. And building castles is going to be how you get victory points. Now, in order to build a castle, you're going to need one of each resource. So let's say, as depicted here, green has acquired one of each resource in some manner. They would pay one of each resource in order to build a castle on any one area where they have influence. So right now on this board, that would only be this spot here or the, the spot next to it. And you can kind of see them printed on the board. For doing this, they're going to earn victory points. And they're going to earn victory points for however many villages and cities are in the horizontal and vertical lines from that castle. So it would be a bad example here because you actually wouldn't get any victory points for having built this spot. 
But let's say, for example, they were able to build right here because they had influence in this direction. In this case, they would earn two victory points for each city and one victory point for each village in the horizontal and vertical lines. So this would be one, two, three, and then four or five, because it's also in this line, six, seven, eight, nine points. And they would mark that appropriately on the track. After they've done all of these things, it's going to move to the next player's turn. Now, there are also some tiles which are going to give you different benefits when you flip them over. So for example, we have this tile here. When you flip this tile over, it's going to also give you two silver from the central area. So this player, when they flipped it over, would get two silver. Silver, during the castle building phase, allows you to buy a resource that you're missing by paying two silver back to the supply. So if Red were to have one wood and one hay, but to be missing a stone, they could pay two silver in order to get the stone to build their castle. There are also tiles that give a card out when you get them. They look like this. They have a the three shields, and then one of the shields has a card on it. The card goes to the player who flips this tile, not to the player whose color is covered by the card. However, that player will not have any influence from this tile when the tile is placed on the board. That would allow you to draw one of these cards, and the cards are going to have different effects. You may play one card per turn on your own turn. And for example, this card here is going to give you five victory points when you play it. That's all it does. But there are other cards that say, for example, allow you to uh, use silver in place of resources to build a castle. Or, for example, to rotate a tile on the board after it's already been placed. And so you're going to continue on playing until all of these have been revealed, all of the resources have been resolved, and each player has taken turns in order to build their castles on the board, scoring victory points. Once all of the tiles are flipped over, the game is going to end, and whoever has scored the most victory points is going to be the winner. The game also comes with three expansions, and they are just very minor expansions. They're called modules. Uh, one is going to be some start tiles, and each player is going to get some of these start tiles, one of these start tiles, uh, to have in their hand of tiles that they have at the beginning of the game. Now, usually you don't have a hand of tiles, but at any one point in the game, you can replace a tile from the board with your start tile, in order to better get more influence, so you'll know that you're getting four influence when you place the tile out onto the board. However, if you have this tile at the end of the game, you get five additional victory points, so it's a benefit not to use it. The second small expansion is one that kind of provides a little bit more interactivity and a little bit more ways of changing the board. So for example, it has some more cards which allow you to add new cities to the board, or it has cards that allow you to overbuild other players' castles if your heraldic points or your influence next to the spot is greater than theirs, and you would have to pay double resources in order to do this. The final expansion gives you a way to essentially play two games at once. Uh, so you would actually have two players playing two games simultaneously on a split board, and whoever won uh, the most points over the two boards would win. I don't really understand the point of this variant, but it exists, and it's out there for you to play. Additionally, with that two-player module, four players could play two games simultaneously and set up kind of a tournament situation where the winner of each game faced each other, and the losers faced each other in a loser's bracket. So that is the gameplay of Castelli, and you might have been able to tell simply from the way that I was going over it, and possibly from the uh, obvious lack of depth, that this is not a game that I particularly am going to enjoy. I really don't think there's anything to it. Flipping poor tiles, just tiles that don't give you the right amount of influence since they have different influence values on them, uh, is going to put you in a situation, oftentimes, where you have very little control over what's going on in the game. Additionally, there are certain spots on the board that when you build your castles, won't give you any victory points. Now, there's a strategy to playing around that. You can build on spots or try and get influence on spots where you can get victory points. But again, if you don't have the right tiles flipped over, if you simply flip bad tiles or they're in a bad position for you, you really can't control the direction the game takes. Now, the small expansions are a nice inclusion, but they really don't change the game enough to change my opinion of it. So all in all, I really am not a big fan of this game. I don't think it has enough depth. I don't really think that it's all that enjoyable, and I really wouldn't even suggest it for an introductory game crowd. Uh, Castelli, just not a very great game in terms of my opinion. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Sommer, and you've been watching what? The Dice Tower.